Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you doing today? Good evening. Better so, than yesterday. Good evening, good really good. Great. That's nice to hear yes. that. You're doing better than yesterday. <laughs> okay. Hi. Uh, so I sent the presentation to WhatsApp. As you know, uh, we are about to finish this module. We're just leaving the today's day and tomorrow. And then we're done with this. Yeah. So I hope that you have finished the platform, the exercises. Uh, today, nobody has asked for help. So I suppose that everything is OK with you. <laughs> or you have any question about the exercises or? No? Anything that you would like to discuss, yeah. maybe no. about the exam, something that you need in order to complete the platform? We'd be okay. No questions? Uh, well, <laughs> some questions. Um, in a, when we are, when we use wood in the, in the, in the, in the pay on fish, let's see one fish. Page 26 appears uh, the way to the text message with abbreviations. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can share my screen with you. I, I have, a, I think I have this in. Uh, okay. What was the Page. Well, I found it, but I need to share my screen for you yeah. to be able to see it. Um, 26 is the number, the page. Yeah, I have it here. I, I, yeah, I guess it. That's, <laughs> that's the that's page. It. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so those are some text message abbreviations that are like commonly used. Um, for example, someone can write just the letter M, meaning M, right? Uh, sometimes uh -huh. people just write the letter U, meaning U as a subject. And you can say, um, for example, sometimes I, I, so you write like, you know, you put these two together, C, U. See you, <laughs> and some people uh, write it like see Which one? you tomorrow, <laughs> like that. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, see you. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Yeah, those are text abbreviation, and yes, they are informal, right? You can use it in them. You can use them on. Um, on writing when you uh -huh. are texting with your friends but well but that's informal yeah that's oh, informal but friends. but but it helps you to write uh -huh. quickly for example if i want to to write um uh the the question um and i write it like I want to write the question because I haven't heard about you for a long time or for a couple of days. You haven't uh -huh. texted to me and I want to know about you and I write this in a quick way. Uh -huh. Are you okay? <laughs> uh, oh. so. Well, this is the first time I see that. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it is, it's very common. Uh, uh, between oh. friends, like you can make combinations. So as you can see, uh, are you? And then I wrote, okay, are you okay? 
right? And they mm -hmm. say, yes, I'm okay. Why are you asking? Oh, because you, have, uh, you haven't written me, you haven't texted me, or you haven't replied to my messages or something like that. Miss? Yes. And my dear. Thank and you. I, Thank you. And I mean, say, you are my love. Ah. Is you? Uh-huh. You are my? Are. Uh, in this case, it's, it's like that. You're my love. And uh, you just can uh, abbreviate using the, like in this way. Ah, but this is a sentence, not a question, right? So, mm -hmm. ready? you are my love. Ah, okay. You are my love. Love and abbreviation is you. V. L-U-V. Mm, yeah, it, it, it can be like that as well. And you can, as I tell you, you can make like combinations using these ones. And um, there are some others. Uh, if for example, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not like um, something that we do every day, like, um, I have learned some of them, like for example, this one. Uh, yeah, I asked for help to uh, one of my coworkers and she told me, oh, you just sent an email and write this and this and that. Uh, but this is the way I do. And she wrote this, Y-O-L-O. -O, and I said, what is that? <laughs> 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 and yeah. she explained me that me she was staying, uh, yeah, that she was um, taking a risk. Uh huh. And it stands for you only live once. You, uh -huh. you only live once. So it's the, the, the first letter here Y O L O. And I said, oh. ah, okay. <laughs> it's like, I'm taking the risk. It's like, because, oh because you only live once. And I said, ah, okay. <laughs> I don't want to take uh -huh. the risk. <laughs> what is the meaning? Um, es que, ajá, yo le estaba preguntando, mira, ¿cómo hiciste tal cosa? Entonces me dijo, ah, este, yo lo mandé así, así, pero vos sabes que yo, y me escribió eso, yo lo. Y como ella todo lo hace así, a lo, solo se vive una vez y, y a ver qué pasa, ¿verdad? Entonces ella es bien así, bien risky. Pero le digo yo, mejor pregunto porque si hago algo mal, nos cae una acción al equipo. Y el equipo sabe que es por mi culpa, entonces como que no, mejor pregunto. Oh my God. Pero yo le pregunté, ¿qué es eso de Yulo? Well, she's younger than me. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And this one, ah, no, yes, no, is no, very no. common. We use them, uh, this one mm -hmm. is very common. It's for your information. Y eso nos lo dicen yes, a cada rato. Course. Just as an FYI. Como que solo para que lo sepas. Uh -huh. Just as an FYI. Eso cada ratito lo ocupa. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, And the other one is I love you, right? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I have also seen this one. Uh -huh. That is the meaning. Uh -huh. Si alguien le escribe lol, es como ja, 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 ja. <laughs> it, That is the equivalent. Mm -hmm. Ay, Dios mío. Okay, is there anything else? Yéndola that you would like to no. share or ask about? Ah, uh, lots of love. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Very good. Perfect. And then you will, uh, it's, those are things that connection problems. Okay, uh, thank you for letting us know, Braulio. Um, when you have, a, a, yes, aquí veo que Braulio tuvo un problema. Siempre este, 
igual pueden notificarlo acá y lo veo más, más rápido porque de repente estoy tan en la clase y, y no miro mucho el teléfono. But it's, it's okay. Mm, right, so let's continue. Uh, okay, um, I, I am right. Good. Good to know. Eh, si tienen problemas con internet, yo sé que está lloviendo por muchos lugares y, y en algunos está a punto de llover. Siempre traten de conectarse. Eh, denle chancecito y con paciencia vuélvanse a conectar, ¿verdad? Para que por lo menos en partecitas sí. estén ahí, estén ahí por la cuestión de, del conteo de los minutos y ya después pueden ver el video de la clase completo, ¿verdad? Pero por lo menos esos, esos minutitos que les cuenten para que no vayan a tener problemas. Eh, ok, so, no sé yeah. si tienen alguna otra pregunta aparte de esto de las abreviaciones en texting. No questions? Ok, so, uh, yesterday we were about to finish the section number five. We are just uh, missing one of the videos and with this we finish the section number five and we're going to start with the review that we have planned so the video is about quantifiers those quantifiers we use them when uh, for example we are talking about um, service results and things like that so we are going to watch the video and then we're going to discuss and practice with this topic When we don't know the exact percentage of something, we use words like some, most, a few. Stay and learn more quantifiers and how to use them. Quantifiers. All families have only one child. Nearly all families have only one child. Most families have only one child. Many families are smaller these days. A lot of families are smaller these days. Some families are smaller these days. Not many couples have more than one child. A few couples have more than one child. Few couples have more than one child. No one gets married before the age of 18. Notice how these quantifiers have an estimated percentage. If you want to make reference to 100%, you may say all, and then you work down the scale depending on the percentage you want to refer to. Follow me in this example. Nearly all women work nowadays. Nearly all, quantifier. Women, plural noun. So in other words, all quantifiers come before plural nouns, except no one. No one gets married before the age of 18. No one, quantifier, gets the verb. As a tip, ask your teacher to remind you about count nouns so you are able to use these quantifiers. Type in two examples using any quantifier you want. Okay, so let's move and jump into this topic uh, i sent the presentation for today's review and i included these slides uh, whenever it's ready okay done my god okay what's typical we can use these quantifiers Um, it just to provide an idea when we don't have an exact uh, amount. In these examples, we are using uh, exact uh, percentages, right? We have, uh, let's start reading and then we're going to go over the topic again. What is typical? I start reading. In Germany, the average age to get married is 31 men and 28 for women. Now, I volunteer to read about in the United Arab Emirates. 
Sandra? Um, in the United Arab Emirates, 85% of the population live in urban areas. Thank you so much. Uh, volunteer to read about in South Korea. Me, coach. Me. Thank you, Evelyn. Okay, in South Korea, um, 59. 50, 59 of couples have children. Thank you so much. Evelyn Mariana, can you continue with in Japan? In Japan, 65% uh, of the elderly population live with their child, children. Okay, thank you so much. Volunteer to continue in Australia. In Australia, 13% of households have more than five people. Thank you so much. What is the correct pronunciation? Households? That is correct, household. Okay, what is the meaning? Hogares. Okay, okay. de niños. Uh, eh, no, hogares, eh, como si decimos casa, nos referimos al inmueble. Verdad, básicamente, si hablamos de hogar, estamos hablando de una familia. Ah, okay. mm -hmm. Más orientado a hablar sobre la familia. Sí. Eh, estamos diciendo que en Australia el 13% de los hogares tienen más de cinco personas, cinco miembros mm -hmm. en la familia. Mm -hmm. Ok. Good question. Uh, volunteer to read about. In Portugal. Mi Adrián. Okay, thank you. Uh, in Portugal, 17% uh, of mother work outside the home. Okay, thank you so much. 70% of mothers. Good. Uh, Alguien más quería leer, solo escuché una vocecita por ahí. Me, teacher. Okay, thank you, Marjorie. In Mexico? In Mexico, 93% of households have a TV set. Okay, thank you so much. In Canada, volunteer. Hi. Thank you, Candida. In Canada, 45% of husband and wife share the husband. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, last one in Ireland. Me. Thank you. In Ireland. <laughs> In Ireland, 83% uh, of the adult popula population own their own home. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, questions? Yes, teacher. Uh, wives is plural of wife. That is correct. That is okay. an irregular plural. No sé si ya... Este es un plural irregular del que usted nos pregunta, Jorge. Wives. ¿Saben los plurales irregulares, verdad? Yes. Uh -huh. Siempre que hablamos de algo irregular, significa que no sigue la regla. Decimos uh -huh. que la mayoría de plurales se, um, se forman poniéndole S al nombre o una ES. Pero en el caso de los que terminan... Eh, eh, por ejemplo, bueno, vamos a hacer wife. Ay. <ríe> wife. Knife. Ok. Mm. Ok, vamos a ver. Si los nombres terminan en F, E o en F, para hacer los plurales se le agrega V y S. Por eso es que vimos que aquí es wives. Ajá. Se elimina esto y se pone V y S. Igual en cuchillos, el plural es knives. El plural para wolf es wolves. Okay. Y eso es eh, con respecto a estos plurales que terminan en F, E o en F. Se agrega V y S para hacer los plurales. That's the thing. 
Thank you. Okay. Uh, you're teacher, um, and also household, household is like home? Like home? Yes. Because house is like casa. And home uh -huh. is casa, pero mi hogar. Yes. It's, it's like similar mm. meaning like home and household. Yes, that's correct. Thank Good. you. Now, as you can see in this example, we are giving exact percentages. Estamos dando porcentajes claro, ¿verdad? 70%, 13%, 65%, 59%. But we can also use quantifiers. Usamos estos quantifiers cuando no tenemos una cantidad exacta, sino que queremos dar nada más una idea general, ¿verdad? Eh, usamos all cuando es, es like a hundred percent, ¿verdad? Eh, y así va a ir bajando el aproximado hasta llegar a zero, que es no one. Eh, no one es solo en singular, pero pues ahí sí si vamos a decir como casi todos, es un nearly all, que es, sería como estimando un 90%, podemos usar nearly all. Most, many, a lot of, some, not many, and few. Así vamos a ir bajando en esta escala. Y es como para hablar en, en, en de, de, de datos, ¿verdad? Como para encuestas o estimados sobre ciertos datos. Eh, so you can say um, some of these examples, for example, uh, most families have on, only one child. Um, and you can say uh, nearly all families are smaller these days. Y podemos decir que casi todas las familias son más pequeñas hoy en día, right? Um, couples have more than one child. Mm, yeah, we can say most couples have more than one child. Gets married before. Uh -huh. We can say not many, not many get married or not many people get married before the age of 18 and like that. Now we have this exercise and you have one similar in your material, which is to rewrite the sentences using quantifiers and then we can compare. For example, I have this one in the United States, 75% of high school students go to college. Desde este 75%, ¿cuál de estos quantifiers podría usar? Many. Many. Eh, sí, podría ser many. Uh -huh. oh, oh, or Early on. Yeah, or most. Ajá, podríamos andar por aquí, ¿verdad? Por most, many, or a lot of. Most, many, or a lot of. And we say in the United States, many of, or a lot of high students, etc. Vamos a sustituir el porcentaje por un quantifier. Okay.
Finished? Finished. Yes, Just finished. No, it's finished. Okay. Let's see <coughs> if we can check your answers. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, we said in number one, we could use many. And that was okay. In the United States, many high school students go to college. Number two, a volunteer. What do you have in number two? Me, teacher. Few okay. people in Brazil. Few people in Brazil. Yes, that is correct. Few people in Brazil are age 55, 65 older. <laughs> Good. And number three, volunteer. Or, or no. Yeah. No one. No one. No one. Hmm. In India, no one votes no before one. the age of 18. Excellent. Number four, what do you have? Many. No many of the people in Sweden live alone. Mm -hmm. Let's see what is the correct one or the most. Some people for number four. Yeah, some people. Uh, what about number five? What do you have? Not many. You? In Singapore, not many people speak English at all. Not many. Uh huh. Yeah, but you can use some others, as I was telling you before. If you use um, not many or some few, that's okay. You're okay. So, with this done, we're going to move to uh, a review. Okay. Hmm. Okay, that was it. So we're going to review um, to start this review with the subject pronoun, object pronoun, and possessive adjectives. And I have this chart, like uh, in order to get confused, right? Eh, los subject pronouns decíamos que son los, como decir los pronombres personales o el sujeto de la oración, ¿verdad? Eh, normalmente usamos el subject pronoun y un verbo. Tenemos un pequeño ejemplo aquí. I am a girl. I is the subject. Am is the verb. And then we have a complement. I am a girl. Eh, cuando es un object pronoun, eh, decimos que eso sirven como para um, uh, saber o a quién se va a dirigir una acción, en quién va a recaer. Y eso es normalmente va primero el verbo y después el object pronoun. Y yeah, I have an example here. I, this is the subject. Then the verb, love. And then the subject, you, a quien, a ti, I love you. And then we have possessive adjectives. Possessive adjectives, we use them to show possession over something, right? We study them mm -hmm. as my, your, his, her, its, our, your, and their. And we also say that they are followed by a noun. También dimos que los possessive adjectives siempre van seguidos de un nombre, de un el que. Eh, for example, if I say, um, and this is my, my, my que. No, so I, I have to say something else be after that. Um, this is, um, this is my pen, right? My my what? My pen, right? And things like that. Uh, siempre tiene que ir seguido de un algo. El, el possessive adjective más un nombre de algo, right? And here we have a chart. This is más extenso, este chart que les tengo acá. Y tenemos... Eh, los sujetos, subject pronouns, y en esa línea va como corresponde, ¿verdad? Con este sujeto. Cuando estoy hablando del sujeto yo, si voy a usar el object pronoun, eh, será mi, el possessive adjective is my, 
y el possessive pronoun mine. Acuérdense que tienen diferentes usos, ¿verdad? Su, como sujeto de la oración es el principal. Cuando es un object pronoun es que, en quien va a caer la acción. Cuando es un possessive adjective es para demostrar posesión y el of, eh, va seguido de un noun. El possessive adjective más un noun después. Y cuando es possessive pronoun, eh, la cuestión de la que estamos hablando va antes o ni siquiera se menciona y luego va el possessive pronoun. Eso es como haciendo un recap de todo esto que vimos en esta sección. Eh, Right, uh, you as subject pronoun, object pronoun is the same. Possessive adjective, we write your, and as possessive pronoun, yours. Then we have the subject pronoun he, object pronoun him, possessive adjective his, and possessive pronoun his. Then for the subject pronoun she, we have the object pronoun is her, Possessive adjective her and possessive pronoun hers. All right, so in the subject pronoun it, object pronoun it, a possessive adjective is its and possessive pronoun is not likely something that exists. And subject pronoun we, object pronoun us, uh, possessive adjective our and possessive pronoun hours. Finally, we have the subject they, object pronoun them, possessive adjective their, and possessive pronoun theirs. Eh, este tema, pues ya lo vimos, pero estoy haciendo el repaso porque yo sé que no es un tema fácil, es de mucha práctica. Eh, igual a veces los conceptos no nos quedan muy claros y si ese es el caso y tienen alguna pregunta, pueden hacerla. En caso. Uh, yes. Sorry. No questions here. Can we continue? Yes, please continue. Okay. Let's continue. All right. And we have some examples here. And the first one is using a subject, I, I have a pen. And then she gave the pen to me. That is the object pronoun. That is my pen, possessive adjective. That pen is mine, possessive <laughs> pronoun. Como les explicaba, cuando es el principal de la oración, es el sujeto, es el, el, el pronombre, ¿verdad? El que usamos como sujeto. Eh, van al principio de la oración seguido de un verbo. Eh, cuando es el object pronoun, es en quien recae la acción, ¿verdad? Eh, ella me dio un lapicero a mí. Ok, yo recibí esa acción. Aquí el sujeto es ella, el objeto soy yo. She gave me, she gave the pen to me. Eh, Luego tenemos los possessive adjectives que ya dijimos que eso sirve para eh, mostrar que algo nos pertenece. Y cuando es un possessive adjective va seguido de una cosa, un noun. En el, aquí tenemos un ejemplo, that is my y el noun es pen, va seguido del noun pen. Este es mi lapicero. Cuando es un object, el, el, el otro, el este va antes, el objeto, o ni siquiera se menciona. That pen is mine. Like possessive pronoun mine. El object yes. va antes y a veces ni siquiera se menciona. Y esos son los ejemplos. Sure. Yeah. ¿Sí? May I say something? Well, uh, before someone told me that uh, the object pronouns uh, are called accusative Accusative pronouns uh, to use it in, in, in accusative form. For example, uh, um, I give I give the money to her. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Accusative. They say. <laughs> yes, yeah, that is a, a, another way to call them. Yes, porque si es como 
señalando a quién, ¿verdad? O quién es el responsable o en quién cayó esa acción. Por eso de ahí viene el nombre. Son acusativos. Sí, y pues ese es un buen tip, ¿verdad? Para recordarlos también. Uh -huh. Yes. That's right. Este. Yes. Teacher. Ajá. Este es una cuestión. Um, en los oyes pronoms, uh, por ejemplo, este, si yo quiero, pues lo voy a usar cuando quiero dar algo a otra persona. Como, por ejemplo, este, llévale este dinero a, a él, digamos. ¿Puede Ajá. ser así? Yes, uh, yes, so you say bring that money to him. Ajá, da, llévale este dinero o dale este dinero a quien, a él. Ajá, cuando estamos haciendo, encargando algo, ¿verdad? Haciendo un, un encargo a, a alguien de que haga algo. Y para quien, así como dio el ejemplo usted, pues sí se puede. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Any other question? <laughs> no more questions? No more questions. Teacher. Okay, so before we proceed with the exercises, I'm going to check attendance. Okay. Voy a chequear asistencia antes de que se me olvide y sigamos con los ejercicios. I have the file ready. Me asusté, me asusté. Abrí otra asistencia que no era. Pero supe que no eran ustedes. ¿Por qué? Aquí están casi toditos. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are here. My God, it's April 27th. Okay, Adrián Ernesto. I'm here, teacher. Aida María. Aida María. Eh, qué raro. Porque... Aida López. Sí. <laughs> Ana Ericelda. Ana Ericelda. Creo que no se conectó. Ana. Sorry. Is that Ana? Ana Liselda. All right. Seems like no, she's not. Ana Jansi. I'm here, teacher. Braulio Javier. I'm here. Candida Janet. Present. Claudia Patricia. Present teacher. Diego Arturo. Present teacher. Edwin Jaciel. I'm here. here. Evelyn Elizabeth. Present. Evelyn Liliana. I'm here. Evelyn Mariela. Present. Ismael Eliseo. Jerry Alejandro. Jorge Alberto. Good evening. Good evening. José Manuel. José Manuel. Present. Thank you. Judith del Carmen. Present. Catherine Giselle. Present, teacher. Liliana Margarita. Present. Luisa María. Luisa María Martínez. Yeah, Luisa María Martínez is not here. Mm. Okay. María Susena. Present. Marjorie Vanessa. Present teacher. Melida Rebeca. 
Present. Natalie Emperatriz. Present. Roberto Carlos. Roberto Carlos, creo que escribió temprano que se estaba desconectando y conectando. Sandra Araceli. Teacher. Tania Michelle. Here, teacher. Vladimir Adalberto. Vladimir Adalberto. Me pareció verlo temprano. Mm. Y Jacqueline Aracelis. Sure. Ok, Sir Jacqueline. Creo que la escuché. Ok, thank you so much. Ok, so we're going to continue. Ok, Roberto, ya lo puse por ahí. Teacher. Yes. Yo. Jerry. Yes. Sí, ya. Yeah. Ok, teacher. Done. I don't know if you can see my screen. ¿Pueden ver mi pantalla? ¿Qué se me hicieron? No los veo. No. Sí, pueden verla. Yo no los veo a ustedes. Solo que me saca la internet. Oh, right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Mm. Ya, yeah, Roberto, sí lo puse. Que estaba. Estoy viendo aquí. Ok, uh, so, we're going to fill in the blanks. Vamos a tratar de completar los espacios en blanco eh, usando un subject, un possessive adjective, yeah. o possessive pronoun, o un object. Van okay. a usar todos. Eh, el ejercicio es este que está acá. ¿Verdad? Y la ayuda está acá. Espero que no usen ayuda, pero yo sé que es es mucho. So, if you need, you can use it. Whenever you see blue, means subject pronoun. Whenever you see red, it means that you are going to use a possessive adjective. A, whenever you see yellow, it's a possessive pronoun. And when you see green, it's an object pronoun. Y este es el ejercicio. I, <laughs> sorry. Okay. I have a book this is my book this book is mine book is give me my book it's mine, it's mine. peter's book is big mine is little so with this key so you can be completing the next sentences para completar estas oraciones van a ir viendo qué es lo que necesitan si necesitan un subject object Possessive adjective o possessive pronoun. Les voy a dar tiempo para que las lean bien y traten de hacerlas sin ayuda. Yeah, please, come on. That's okay. nice, that's nice. Como niños chiquitos con clave de colores. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, what? Sounds 
This darkness.
Okay, how are you doing? You finished? Do we have a volunteer for the yes. first one? Okay, volunteer for the first one. You have a ruler. You have a ruler. This is my ruler. This ruler is mine. Show them my ruler. Susan's roller is long. Mine is short. Mm -hmm. Not less. Okay, if it says this, uh, you have a ruler. Ah, yeah, this is my ruler. Yeah, that's correct. Very good job. Um, has some marker. Volunteer? This is his marker. ¿Cómo empecé entonces ahí? His marker is his. Mm. He. He, ajá. Uh -huh. He has a marker. This is his marker. This marker is, is in, in is his. Ajá. Uh -huh. Give. King. Give her maybe. Oh. Give him his. Give him. him. Give Mark. him his Give marker. Him. Uh huh. Give him his marker. It. <clears throat> him. It's. Him. Yeah. Him. ¿De quién es? De él. Ajá. ¿Y cómo decimos eso? Him. Him is blue. Ajá. It's. Yes. ¿De quién es? De él. It's his. Like possession, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Estamos hablando de a quién le pertenece. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, let's continue. Hmm. The marker is pink, pink uh, is blue. Okay, vamos a usar la clave. <laughs> vamos a ir usando la clave. Uh, Yes, Evelyn, I know it is confused, maybe because we are using all at the same time, porque estamos usando todo al mismo tiempo, pues sí, es un poquito confuso. Vamos a ver. Um, eh, eh, ¿Dónde estábamos? Ok, if we go back, el color de las rayitas le va a ir diciendo si van a usar un subject un possessive adjective o possessive pronoun o un object. ¿Ok? Estos colores les van a ir diciendo que van a usar. Cuando veamos azul es un sujeto. ¿Verdad? Aquí tienen algunos que ya están. Aquí vemos la rayita azul y sabemos que íbamos a usar un subject, un sujeto. Y el sujeto iba a ser él, ¿verdad? Porque leímos más adelante y vimos que se refería a algo de él. Entonces aquí escribimos he. He has a marker. This is his marker. The marker is. Y veo las rayitas amarillas. El rayita amarilla me dice que voy a usar un possessive pronoun. Y como estamos hablando de algo que le pertenece a él, utilizo his. Ok, this marker is his. Give, y tengo la rayita verde allí. Him. Ajá, him. Dale a él. Dale a él. Give him. Y luego rojo. ¿Qué era el rojo? His. His, ajá. Dale a él su marcador. Give him his marker. Yes. Uh -huh. Give him his marker. It's con la the king de colores, bro. It is his. It is his. Uh -huh. El it amarillo. Is his. It is his. Nina's. Uh, uh -huh. It is his. Her marker. Ahora digo el de ella, ¿verdad? Her marker is pink. No, it's pink. It this is blue. blue. El mine. mine. El mío it's es Azul. Es blue. Mine es blue. Ajá. Bueno, hicimos Mine. el primer ejercicio usando la clave de los colores y pensando de quién es el objeto, ¿verdad? O de quién, a quién pertenece o quién es el sujeto del que estoy hablando. <coughs> ¿Sintieron más fácil viendo la clave de los colores? No, no, no. Yeah. It is easier, teacher, but um, um, I believe that I... I can nominate this one. Mm? <laughs> okay. If you, uh, this is like testing, right? Para algunos puede ser uh -huh. fácil hacerlo así, para otros es un poco más complicado. Si sintieron muy complicado este, hacerlo así, pues déjenlo ahí. Mañana vamos a hacer otro ejercicio menos complicado. Eso es como ver qué es lo que funciona. Santo, si eso no es no. Sí, ya se nos fue el tiempo y nos sentimos. Entonces es de ir viendo qué nos funciona. Si sienten esto muy complicado, entonces mañana lo vamos a seccionar por partes, ¿ok? Para no hacerlo todo de un solo. Traten de hacerlo usando las claves así despacito, ya sin eh, tal vez mañana en algún ratito que tengan libre. O, o pues lo dejan. Si sienten que es muy frustrante, déjenlo. <ríe> y mañana nos, no eh, nos vemos y hacemos otra práctica diferente. ¿Ok? Uh -huh. Para que no sea todo así como overwhelming. We still have time for tomorrow's review. So thank mm -hmm. you for joining today's section and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Take care. Bye, teacher. Good night. Bye. Bye.